Okay, here we are in Logic Pro now. So I'm still using the same Behringer, Behringer X32 as the USB interface where all the mics come in and everything. Um, for this one, I am only using one microphone, which I showed in the um, in the speaker cabinet little quick video we did. I'm using the, we're micing up the G1275. If this looks familiar, it's because it's the same setup I used for the two mic rig um, for Van Halen One and Van Halen Two. So yes, here's the green back. It's muted. Um, all everything else is is completely. It's the same thing. There's just slightly different settings in the EQ and maybe the harmonizer and the reverb. So the NLS nonlinear summer um, waves makes it. It's a cool thing. This is mimicking an SSL, and I use that because it's the closest thing to like an API preamp. So this is this is my substitute for having an outboard or a real API preamp. Um, then I use an API EQ of 550A, but as you can see, every th I'm not using it to EQ. I'm just passing analog signal through it just to get more of an analog feel. And then also on the mic channel, on the 57 mic channel, I'm using, where'd it go? An 1176, and we're not hitting it hard. I mean, it's maybe two or, two or three dB compression. Um, doing the Dr. Pepper setting 10, two and four. Um, here, I'll show you how hard we're hitting it. Here's the. See, it's not, it's not that much. So then all of this gets bussed over to the studio microphone or studio room. And this is, this is kind of a feature in, um, this is a feature in the Sunset Sound Reverb package. So let me just, so I'll play that for you. So it's getting blended into the sound. So it's like a, it's mimicking a microphone in the room in Studio 2 at Sunset Sound. So we just, let me just solo that. So you see when I mute it, it's, it's, you can tell, but it's just, it's subtle. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a nice little added flavor to getting a more live kind of in the room kind of sound. So I like using that trick. Um, cause it would, the guitar would have been picked up by open drum mics and every other mic that was in the, in the main room. So that's a, that's an emulation of the main room, uh, courtesy of the sunset sound reverb app from, um, IK multimedia. Um, all right. So that this channel then gets bust over to its output goes to bus four, which is, I still got it labeled as two guitar tracks, but this is where, this is where the guitar, I guess, gets processed the most so I, again i've got another one of those non-linear summers here at the top but just to pass through all at line level again just the analog thing um, and then we run into where did it go this is the eq um this is this is the eq i'm using for the uh, all the main guitar parts here on fair warning um it's nothing radical it's the Poltec again. It's the same EQ that we've used for the first two, but the EQ settings are slightly different. Um, if anything, they're they're not as pronounced as they were on the first two albums. It's more of a middle of the road type of EQ. So you can get a good look at that. And then this is where we we start using the auxiliaries or auxiliary buses for um, the reverb and the harmonizer so this um, bus one comes out to the reverb and also I'll pull over this ik multimedia sunset sound reverb um, using the pre-delay is, is set at 100 milliseconds um, we're rolling off the low end at 129 hertz 130 hertz and the, the top end is cutting out at 7k so it's a it's a darker reverb 
we're using the echo plate reverb. We're not using the EMT. Um, we're using the echo plate, and we're not using one of the famous chambers from from Sunset Sound. So this is, I did my best to try to copy and you know, just emulate what the reverb sounded like on that original recording. So I can play it. Let me just solo, solo the reverb for you. <laughs> And as you can see, the reverb is straight up. It's in the stereo, it's not panned hard left, hard right. What's panned hard left, fairly hard, almost completely hard left, is the actual guitar, the dry guitar. So that's, that's pushed over to the left side along with, and here's the harmonizer. So we're busting this over to the harmonizer. Um, and this is the H910. And it's a, it's a pretty simple, I mean, we're, it's the smallest pitch shift down I can do. Um, it's not a micro pitch because I don't think this one can do micro pitch that they got to go to the 949, which was their next one. So this is, this is the famous 910. This is like the first one that kind of did it and it's famous for its pitch glitches and that glitch creates kind of a cool sound. Um, but we're using a little bit of feedback. Uh, just to give it a little bit of chorus type swirl But I can't solo that one for you because if I do you won't hear any difference because it needs something to pitch shift against But we can mute it. So let's do that again. It's very subtle so we <laughs> So that's pretty much the guitar sound in a nutshell. I mean, it doesn't, um, oh, one other thing I guess I should show you. So on the main output side, I am running an LA-2A. Where'd that go? It's up here. So this is compressing everything on the output side. So you can, sh I'll show you how hard we're hitting that. Again, not much. And then I'm using some tape emulation. It's, it's a Studer. It's a 15 IPS Studer. Um, I just picked it because I, I liked the way it sounded and it sounded and it was a famous deck. I don't know what, was, what decks they actually had at sunset, but anyway, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> It kind of acts as a nice glue, and it takes it cuts takes some of the top end off. Um, it just it's just a little bit of compression. Uh, I really like it. I use it on just about everything because um, it just helps for that whole analog feel, and I think it's really important. Um, as far as the other intro, um, the hear about it later intro, that's. Similar again, we're just running um, s similar to the Women in Love intro, same setup. I'm running into straight into the board using a direct input. There's no guitar amplifier. Oops, there we go. For this one, for this one, I'm running a 949 harmonizer, um, and I did a, I think I did a stacked version of it, just to give it more depth. Um, no, I, yeah, there it is, 949 stacked. So I'm, I'm, one up and one down. So it's, again, it's just a with a 12 percent, a little chorusy swirl on it. But mostly what you're hearing is not is not the harmonizer you're hearing the flanger I'm, I'm plugging into the actual mxr flanger and then running that direct into the the di and then going into the the board and then coming into the daw so it's um pretty simple there's not a lot happening on it <laughs> But 
But that's it. I mean, that's basically how this whole thing is done. It's pretty simple, and that's kind of my motto. I try to keep it simple for all the recording process because I think that's exactly what they did. There it is.